Hi. Welcome back. I hope everybody enjoyed the exam. Uh, I expect to have it graded probably by probably by Friday, I hope. Um, we're going to move on and finish up Chapter 7. That's basically all we're going to do for the rest of the course is finish Chapter 7. I'll take that back. We'll go back and do just a little bit of Chapter 5. That'll be some nice review of thermodynamics. But for today, we're talking about uh, black body radiation. I just want to review what a black body is and what are the experimental facts about black body radiation that we'll then go on to explain using the statistical mechanics associated with boson gases. Um, so this is from Schroeder, section 7.4. So this is black body radiation. The basic idea is if you take a solid object and heat it up, and collect the light that's emitted by the hot object. And by light, I mean any electromagnetic radiation. It could be visible or it could be outside the visible, like infrared or even microwave. Collect those, that electromagnetic radiation, analyze its spectrum, and you find out that um, the spectrum of light that's emitted by a black body can be used essentially as a, a thermometer, that if you have a, a, <clears throat> a hot object the, the color of the object is basically indicative of its temperature. So that's just an observation that we know about, and of course everybody understands it by, you know, working with stoves and grills and stuff like that. Um, so even on Wikipedia you can actually find some, some vi visual temperature scales where you see the approximate temperature of a body encoded in its, in its color by eye. Um, and so you use this actually quite often. Uh, so for example, well, I'll show you some examples in a minute, but the basic idea is if you've got like a, a hunk of steel inside a, an oven and you're trying to do something with it and you see that it has approximately this color, you know that it's about 800 C, right? And so as you go hotter and hotter, you go from the orange to the white, and eventually you get blue, right? This is just sort of the basic phenomenology. And so what we're going to do is talk about how do you understand the shape of the spectrum that you see when you actually measure a spectrum for this uh, light emitted from a black body. And so if you do the experiment, it actually looks like this. You have this sort of asymmetric peak function. So spectral density is, roughly speaking, it's, it's light intensity. So it's sort of like um, energy per unit energy interval per unit volume. It's a weird unit, but think of it as light intensity. Um, and then the basic idea is that the peak in the light intensity shifts to higher and higher energy as you go to higher and higher temperature. And so this Wien's law basically tells you that the wavelength at which the maximum occurs times the temperature is this constant, 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters times Kelvin. But this is just an, an experimental fact. Eventually, we'll understand where this comes from uh, in our analysis in the next mini lesson, but for now, this is just something people measured and understood. So one thing I want to point out is that when we're thinking about this, this is a hot object that's basically emitting incoherent radiation. Uh, and so what you're seeing is a continuous spectrum, right? All of these energies or all of these frequencies or all of these wavelengths have light being emitted at them. They're not discrete emission lines like you would see in like a neon lamp if you look through a diffraction grating or something. So it's a continuous spectrum. But the shape of the spectrum needs to be understood. So let's keep going. I do want to point out, like I said, using measurements of that type of spectrum is actually a legitimate method of thermometry. And so when you, um, thermometers that use black body radiation as uh, temperature measurement tools are called pyrometers and the technique is called pyrometry. So I actually have this uh, pyrometer in my lab um, and you basically look through the viewfinder, uh, focus on the sample you're interested in, which may be far away, maybe inside a vacuum chamber, which is how it is in our lab, and basically it uses the color uh, to translate into an actual temperature. It's really valuable, um, literally and figuratively, right? I mean, 
almost two thousand dollars for a little tiny camera huh. this video is not sponsored by the way but I would certainly be interested if Omega wanted to sponsor me I'd be happy to shield for them <clears throat> so another experimental example of black body radiation is actually if you look uh, out in space and measure the cosmic microwave background so people found out decades ago that there's always this um, microwave radiation anywhere you point say a radio antenna in the sky you see this constant background uh, and so eventually um, they were able to measure the spectrum of the microwave radiation that's sort of permeating the universe and it has this shape that is an amazingly perfect black body spectrum. So the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2006 went to Mather and Smoot and for, for basically designing the satellite Kobe that did these measurements um, that really proved that the cosmic microwave background is, is, is really a perfect black body which means essentially that it has a temperature and the temperature is partly determined by the where the peak is and so in this case the peak is in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum and that places the temperature very low at about 2.7 kelvin and so one of the things that's interesting about this plot is if you look at it you know the the fit to the black body curve that, we're, that we know is true by now um, is a solid line here. The error bars on the experimental data points are too small to see on the plot, so they're smaller than the square symbol size. So Mather came to NC State a couple years ago to give the the Thomas lecture, and he pointed that out in his in his talk that he gave us. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so what's the issue? The issue is that if you do classical statistical mechanics. For a hot black body you do not get the curves that you see experimentally right so if you just do the theory the classical statistical mechanics you get a prediction that looks like this green curve which is just a schematic that i made uh, and it basically shows that you predict that the light intensity sort of agrees down at really low energies but as you increase the energy the light intensity is predicted to blow up really strongly and be way, way higher than the light intensity you actually see in experiment, okay? <clears throat> and so the idea here is that um, this is called the ultraviolet catastrophe because it's a blow up in light intensity uh, that is not observed experimentally. So basically at high energies, we call things ultraviolet, often in physics jargon. And conversely, if you're at low energies, you sometimes call it infrared, but that's just jargon. It's not, <clears throat> not meant to actually imply anything about where in the visible, where in the electromagnetic spectrum you actually are. But the basic idea is that <clears throat> classical statistical mechanics tells you that out at high energy, there are just too much contribution to the light intensity. It's just orders and orders of magnitude above what you see experimentally. And so somehow we have to get rid of light intensity out at these high energies. And in fact, we need to make it drop back down to zero um, by some reasonable energy. And so the basic idea that Max Planck figured out is that just in some ways, just by inspecting the statistical mechanics calculation he was doing, he realized that if he went in by hand and said, no, the energies can't be any old thing you want for the electromagnetic radiation, they have to be quantized as an integer multiple of Planck's constant times frequency, then you can make this happen. Um, and so it was really uh, an interesting analysis in that there was this there was this discrepancy between experiment, these peaked curves, and theory, the green curves. And Planck sort of just went in and played with it and was like, okay, what do I have to do to turn this green curve into, say, this red curve? And that's where he got the idea for quantization of photon energy. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't any kind of deep thinking or special math. It was really just playing to make the green curve look like the red curve. Subsequently, there was a lot more analysis that led to that led to uh, understanding that that quantization of 
photon energy was really important and fundamental. But we'll talk in detail about what Planck did in the next mini lesson.